Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a good show lined up. But first, let's take a look at our weather. Brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. High is going to be 70 and low is 49. <laughs> down there, cool again for a couple of days. I know you've seen the forecast, but the water temperature is hanging in there, 70 degrees. So it's, it's hit 70. It's probably stay there a little while, and it's going to be uh, it's in good shape. It's, it's just been really rough, really churned up with all this wind. Our river region is brought to us by Panama City Coca-Cola. Good folks down there. We're looking at the Appalachia to Blunstown 11.8 and level. And the Choctahatchee at Caraville, 6.1. Both rivers in pretty steady shape right now. This is, I'm seeing it, I'm going to predict the Choctahatchee will be going up with this rain we just had yesterday. So we're going to, uh, it'll be going up, but the reading right now is level. Uh, our tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn. We've talked about it all week long, strong tides. The low tide this morning at 4.47 and high tonight at 7.15. Today's Thursday. April the 4th, and uh, the weekend, we'll, we'll wait and see uh, what's going on on the weekend, so we hope there's going to be some good weather coming up. A wind, I had a double check, it. they're calling for wind coming out of west at from 15 to 18. That's a strong wind, so really not a good day to get on the water in a small boat, so it's going to be, uh, hopefully it'll calm down some by, by Saturday. Let's take a break, we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look before we get into our regular pictures. Uh, for three shows now, this third show, I've tried to get the, the lifespan of these fish. That, I had a chart of them, and uh, every time I've, I've, I've got cut short with my time schedule, so uh, I'm going to do it first today. So we make sure we get through it because I've been wanting to share it with you because it's so it's so interesting and all. And the, uh, fresh water and salt water, the lifespan of different fish. I just got up, well, last week now. I was, it was intriguing to me. I started looking it up, and I didn't know they lived that long. Or, or I thought they lived longer than that. So it was, I would start with the brim. A lifespan of seven years. Okay. And this is sort of a... And I had all kind of catfish. But I've looked up the channel cat. Look at there. A channel cat can live 16 to 24 years. A channel cat just sitting in that channel and just <laughs> eat what's coming down. <laughs> We used to love to catch my channel cat. And a blue cat, which is pretty strong too, a blue cat now can live to be 21 years old. Man, that's, that was surprising. And then coming up with the, uh, all right, a black crappie. Here we go, 10 to 15 years. And Lake Talquin, uh, we need to uh, make sure we keep them uh, stocked over there because that's a great place for them. The flounder, this is a big deal. The southern flounder, which is close to our gulf flounder here, it's in the southern, it lives to be eight years. So they're, uh, they, you know, I don't know how long it takes them to get 14 inches. It seems like it's taking them longer than, than, uh, than it seemed like before because there's a lot of them out there are 12 inches, but 14 inches is getting hard to find. The scamp, which is just a great eating fish, a scamp will live to be about 21 years. Ain't that interesting? 21 years for a scamp. And then uh, going into the Spanish mackerel, it says Atlantic, but I'm going to say it's the same one here. Only five years, this is a short lifespan. They'll come flying through here, and, uh, and a lot of them get caught or netted, but they'll live five years. And this is a research institute to put this out. Uh, it's thin little mullet. They have all kind of mullets. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's 10 years, so I, I couldn't find it. Well, I've got a little black mullet. But this is a skinny one. But anyways, 10 years, I'm, I'm guessing about the same in each, in each category of the mullet. They're a great white shark. With, folks, they can live 70 years. That's something. You know, that's, that's a heck of a lifespan for a big old thing like that. Okay, and then the sandbar shark, well, I put it in. a lot, all kinds of sharks to look at. But the sandbar now, we have a lot of those that around here in the Gulf Coast. They can live to be 32 years. And then the, uh, of course, the spinners, and we had a lot of spinner sharks, and they're saying that we, uh, a bunch of them out there now, a lifespan of 15 years. 
of course, a big red snapper, which we love. 18 years, the Caribbean red snapper, which is we're an offshoot of that, a gulf red snapper. 18 years. And let's see, one or two more. The bee liner, vermilion snapper, smaller fish, eight to 10 years. And that's been a, a saving grace for a lot, of, a lot of boats now, catching these bee liners. They've, they've really been a good population of them. And the old sturgeon, which we talk a lot about, the gulf sturgeon, look at it, 50 to 60 years. Now, is that not cool? 50, 60 years. And we've studied those with Frank Peruca, one or two more. Red breast sunfish, eight years. You know, that category there, those are going to be about seven or eight. The tarpon, 55 to 63 years. I don't know how the research ended up on that, but it's really cool. 55 to 63 years. And, and no telling how many some of those have been caught, how many times they've been caught. And I thought about finished. The tuna, bluefin tuna, that's 20 years. And let's see, a whiting, which we catch a lot of now. This is, out of all of them, this one surprised me more than anything. They said they can live to 22 years, the sand whiting. And that's really good eating. I had no idea they could live that long. Okay, that's it right there. So uh, that the the big thing on, on the lifespans, they, uh, uh, the Research Institute, I don't know how they figured it out, I guess they were able to do it on their study and all, but uh, let's go from that into uh, the fly fishing I mentioned the other day. I've got more information on this fly fishing clinic over here. Uh, it's going, I've got more information on it. I'll, put, I'll pick it up during the break, but it's going to be going to mark your calendar. not that far away, about a month away, May 2nd or 4th, but it's going to be a really interesting stuff. There, like I said, I mentioned the other day, a fly fishing tournament film, how to tie flies. I was just tickled to see they're still doing, I mean, they're doing stuff like this. A lot of people are really interested. I got, I got some information the other day. Somebody had called and wanted to know for a fly fishing club. There used to be a fly fishing club around in this area. If you know of one, uh, if this one's still active, uh, let me know so we can share it because there are a lot of folks that would like to get together maybe once a month or, or two and just uh, get together and, and try some flies or talk about, share some things, and because fly fishing is so interesting, and we're right on the verge of doing, some, we're right on the edge of catching some, uh, about to hit the freshwater fly fishing right, <clears throat> right now. I know some some guides that specialize here in <clears throat> Saint Andrew Bay uh, on going fly fishing with a Spanish mackerel. I've seen, I know Matt Smith does, and a couple of others. They just, uh, you sort of have to target them with your saltwater flies, but. These guys come in from out of town, pay good money just to go fly fishing for Spanish. So it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. I really enjoy getting uh, feedback from, from you, the viewers. And it's always interesting what y'all share with us. And here's one from uh, John Anglin. John, he and his family from Northeast Georgia. They have a place here at St. Joe Beach. They come down pretty regular, but he watches the show every morning. He's been a very loyal viewer over the years. He lives up there, uh, north, well, like I said, northeast Georgia, but he, he sent his video. He's down now, and uh, he sent it over to me. Uh, they have a barred owl somehow got stuck in his chimney. So he had to call the Georgia Department of Natural Resources because the dog, the dog started hearing something and he started hearing something. They looked all around the house, couldn't find anything and finally figured something was up in the chimney. Some of y'all have been there. So he sent me this video. It's interesting of this is a DNR guy from Georgia. Uh, here we go, trying to get some, uh, let's see. All right, there, 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 okay. So he hears something up there. I'm gonna sort of walk you through it. Our fire, I, my fireplace is exactly like that. I thought I was, John, I was going to tell you, our fireplaces are exactly the same stone. So anyway, so he's got his, so he's got a net there, and he hears something. He's got a glove on his hand, uh, Georgia Department of Natural Resources. And, uh, and I see the kindling that, that you have on the left side of the fireplace. I got tickled. We, I understand. I know it gets cold up there in northeast Georgia in January. So here we go. He's trying to reach up there. He knows he's up there, so... They don't know what it is. They really don't know what it is. They just think it's something. They know it's some kind of animal up there. He starts pulling it out. <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's a barred owl. Look at that, folks. It's been up there a couple of days. All right. 
So he's got him, he's got him in the nest, sort of hold him. He, he knows what he's doing. So he takes him outside on the back porch, and first thing they do, they he, they pour some water. They start they got some water and start pouring the water on him to okay, to just sort of make sure he's not injured. And there's okay. They just pour pour some water on him and and uh, this is amazing. Now, <laughs> Look at him. He said, well, I know he wants to say, well, thank you. And he, he sort of gets him set up you know, off the back porch there in the northeast toward the mountains. And let's see. John takes this uh, video like I do sometimes. There he goes. He's flying off. You just could see him. There he goes. Headed to the pine woods of Georgia. So anyway, John, thank you so much for sharing that with us. This is uh, uh, nature uh, at all kind of all kind of. Uh, Weird thing. You wonder how in the world did he get caught up in the chimney, and they don't really know. They, of course, obviously he came from up top and somehow came in and maybe fell in or tried to fly down and couldn't twist around. He just kept sliding down. But it's funny how he just kept hearing things. Okay, let's go to our pictures. Let me see. All right, look, I know Monday was April Fool's Day, and of course, as you get older, you don't get into it as much as you used to as a kid. But it's, Sometimes it's still funny, but most of us are wise enough now to figure out April Fool's Day. But I did see a picture of one I want to share with you because <laughs> this was funny. They buy, uh, they open up, they think they got a dozen Krispy Kreme donuts and open up, it's a, be a vegetable tray. So that is a good April Fool's joke. <laughs> oh, I put a smile on my face. Brett Donner, one of our viewers, now he's good about telling us what's going on. Winston, it seems like the Spanish have slowed way down. I troll yesterday afternoon and only got only landed one Spanish, while Captain Turtle Mike Grazioso and Captain Rich Frady both caught some nice bull reds from their kayaks. Hope the latest Spanish macro tournament finds more than I did. Tight lines, and I see you tomorrow at 5:30. Brett Donner from Compass Lake. Now here are the pictures. Nice red fish out of that Hobie kayak. Now that's, that is fun fishing right there, folks. It really is. Good job there. And here they are fishing or not. These guys, these guys are avid fishermen. They really are. And uh, they, they uh, have some good stuff. Look at there. Good fishing right there. All three of them. All right, Stan Kirkland from God and the Goblin the other day. I'm, going to, I, I'm not going to tell the story on this. I'm going to let Stan come on and tell the story on how, how we got this gobbler, because he had a, you know, he called him up, it's a process, and he's gonna come on and, sh and talk about it. <laughs> I, I, I laugh, I shouldn't laugh, well, it, it's funny. Some people, so, uh, well, anyway, you see what this is, it's St. George Island, and it, the guy said he counted 10, one, two, three, anyway, I'm gonna count them. First of all, you never put surf rods that close together. Second of all, you never put that many out there Third of all, you always have them, like that one leaning backwards, you always have them sort of leaning forward a little bit. So obviously this is a rookie, and also as a selfish person, or maybe they just don't know any better, but got them really spread out. Again, let me let me say this, because I think about this a lot. Surf fishing has become more and more popular. I talk about when I was doing it, I could look all the way down the beach and never see anybody and early in the morning. And I, I've come to the conclusion, it's not a law or anything, but just it's sort of, you know, I, I start wrapping things up by 10, 10, between 10 and 11, I'm, I'm out of there. Because that's when the families are coming down to the beach and it's not going to be good fishing and, you know, the kids want to splash around. And, you know, one thing about surf fishing, you can get up early there at day. If you get up there at daybreak and you fish three or four hours, that, you know, you've usually had enough by then. If, and you should have, you, you should have some uh, good mess of fish. So anyway, just a rule of thumb, I share it with people. And the rods, you can use as many as you want to. It's not a... It's not a uh, well, you gotta be, you gotta tend to them. But I, like I said before, I use three, throw one way out, one in the middle, and then one short. And I, I move them around. You've seen the videos for the years, the 19 years I've been doing it on the show. And I just feel strong about, you know, sharing the beach. Also the beach goers, I get a kick out of some of them. I, I try to, they'll go up on you sometimes, sometimes they'll go around you. So it's just whatever they feel like doing. Okay, moving on. This is what Manny was talking about yesterday. I know it's a, it's a little ways off. But uh, I, this is the official poster that they sent to me after the show. It's be June the 8th. It's usually the first or second Saturday of June. And we'll talk more about that as we get closer into June. My buddy Rick Bringer down there, he's 
Graduated from Rutherford, a good basketball player, and moved from down there to Central Florida. This is Santa Fe River, but I thought, now isn't this a cool Florida picture of that gator and the greenery in the springtime? I just, uh, right along these, these rivers, that's just so cool. Thank you, Rick. Really good, okay, Derek Gibson, uh, he, this was last Friday, he said, good Friday week, rarely disappoints. Weather, not so great, strong winds, a day of rough storms, great fellowship with friends and some good brim caught. No shell cracker found, but the new moon may have something to do with it. So this is, uh, this is Derek Gibson and what they, this is over Lake Talquin. Look at a mess of fish. Now, that looks like a lot of fish, and it is, but uh, they were down there for the weekend, and that's just the guys that get together on, on Good Friday a weekend, and they enjoy the fishing together. That's five guys that just enjoy the fishing and all. Uh, okay, let's go ahead, let's take a break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome, welcome back. We've got, uh, we've got to set up, we've got time, time is uh, running, we've run out of time, but we're going to try our best to get everything in this segment. Let's take a look at our fishing game times from Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. We're looking at 8.14 or 10.14 this morning, and from 8.41 to 10.41 tonight. We have a fundraiser coming up Saturday at, at, over there up there in Southport. It's going to be a Gulf Coast Air Condition and Drew Pollard company there, and there's some folks putting it on a fundraiser. It's a, uh, what has happened, it's, it's a good fundraiser. I'm gonna just show you, here's a, here's right, a benefit raffle for Jackson Barefoot. The proceeds go to the Barefoot family. Uh, they've been around a long time. Tickets are $10 and then you can buy some raffle tickets and, and uh, these are all the things you can win. So anyways, the fish fry, the drawings and all that. Uh, let's see, some, the fish fry itself is gonna, just gonna be good. So up there, right across from the old men's club and, but here's this, uh, and here's uh, here's more of it right here. J okay, Jackson was tragically hit by a car while playing baseball with his family. He has overcome so many obstacles on his way to recover, but it's a very long road ahead of him. He's 11 years old. Please help us make sure that this family gets uh, some support. They, they can use some money. So it's at Franklin Avenue in Southport. It's a family family friendly events. Bring the kids and have a bounce house and and different people. And Morgan Black is doing it right there. Morgan Black's phone number is right there. Good job, Morgan. We appreciate you doing that for this family. It's really here's a picture of him. He's really do, he's recovering pretty well. And it was just a pure accident. Uh, <laughs> and they're doing okay, but they've had an enormous amount of uh, expenses and all. If you can donate to that. I, and it was such a, you know, so many accidents are just freak accidents. It's, and uh, what happened, he was playing baseball, throwing a baseball in, in the front yard with his dad, and the ball went out in the yard, and, and his two trucks were coming, so he stopped and waited for the trucks to go by, and then it went, and there was a car behind it, and it wasn't going real fast, but it hit him. It wasn't nobody's fault. I mean, really, it's just, just one of the things, and because uh, he waited for the trucks. But anyway, if you get a chance to, uh, you know, we're gonna keep up with Wally Barefoot and his w lovely wife and family. So anyway, moving on. Uh, before we get to, the, I, let me go and show these pictures. I wanted to end the other day. Okay, this right here. This is Jason Keep. He sent this to me. I built a new rod over winter and broke it in real well today. Unfortunately, nothing to bring home. But I just want to show you how beautiful the water was out there last week. And Jason, of course, these are not in season, but he he caught some nice fish. But it is a beautiful picture of that water uh, out there before the storms came in. Good job, Jason. Keep and then a fine red snapper there. And I know uh, I know you have uh, enjoyed that trip. <laughs> it, it it was last week. So he caught he, he was lucky. He got a day when it was not uh, was not blowing really hard. Uh, let me try to catch back up with the uh, with some of the pictures. Let me see. I've shown these. We're going to look at the right here. I wanted to show this because talking about family doing things and all. Blake Sutherland has been on the show before, so he goes. Uh, he loves to hunt fish. It's a Sutherland family. As Tim is his dad. Okay, this time in the woods is nothing I will ever take for granted. Chasing these birds is the most exciting and incredible thing I have ever done. Every color and feather on a wild turkey is so detailed and amazing. I'm beyond blessed. God gives us the ability to do this every year. To another morning in the pines and many more to come. To God be the glory. And he's hunting there with his dad, Tim Sutherland. What a great picture. 
and uh, they, they really loved to hunt. And I know Tim's dad was one of the first bow archer guys, bow hunters here in Bay County when the bows came back popular. So good job, Blake Sutherland. Speaking of family things, uh, Brooke Lloyd, the principal out there at Patronus, and this, she sent this to Jim, her husband Jim, that's the Jim, and that's her daughter Tracy. But well, folks, look at this. This is a giant red hermit crab. It's right there on San, sort of, uh, on San Andrew Bay, not across to, from the shipyard, that, that property over there. There's some folks living there and some nice homes. So look at that. This is really, look how big that is. Rare. They've lived there a long time. And uh, like I say, Jim is a financial officer of the school system. And they love to fish and, and uh, do scalloping and all, to run into them. We've got, we've got to let the dog smell it. <laughs> okay. we got to congratulate. We had Ronnie Stevenson on the show remember, about a month ago. They did present him with the Florida Land Steward Land Owner of the Year. This ceremony was in Tallahassee about two weeks ago. I, I couldn't make it, but Ronnie Stevenson, Jackson County. Folks, he, he was telling me I, that they were asking him questions on how to do, how to do uh, certain things. I mean, these scientists were. Here's a picture of Ronnie receiving this award. Very proud of you, Ronnie, and all the work you've done with that. Okay, here's some up upcoming events real quick. We've got all th kind of things going on. Over here at Eagle Wilson Biofuture Center, not this weekend, but next weekend is a public day, April 13th, 9 to 2. Uh, food trucks, yard games, they, all kind of things going on. So put that on your calendar. If you get a chance, it's just, uh, okay, and this is, uh, and then coming up, this is the same thing from 9 to 2, and it was public land day. And then later on, they're going to have a Red Fox rendezvous. That's going to be back in, that's going to be in May. So anyway, you see, uh, so many things are going on with outdoors, and a lot of times we, we just take it for granted, but if you want to do something outdoors, either participate in or go see a festival like this, there's something going on. And go ahead and send us information to us, and we'll share share with other folks. So we, uh, we appreciate you sending information and, and also the videos. Oh, when you do videos too, I've mentioned this before, try to go horizontally when you take the video, not vertically, because you do it horizontally, it fills up the whole screen and uh, we, we, you can see it better. So, uh, but it's good. Anything you send to us, good. I'm gonna wrap it up for the day. Y'all have a great day. Enjoy our beautiful outdoors. Take care of the outdoors and do something good for someone else today and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.